Science. Man has long dreamt of living on another planet. But could human beings really survive in a self-contained biosphere? 20 years ago, a daring project was launched in the Arizona desert in what was the first ever large-scale attempt to replicate a miniature version of the Earth. It was called Biosphere 2. It was built to be a closed system where we were going to learn you know, how long can people live in a materially enclosed setting? Can they grow enough food to sustain themselves? Do they have enough water to recycle and reuse? Is their atmosphere rebreathable re and sustainable? The multi-million dollar facility contained five different ecosystems. A mangrove wetland, tropical rainforest savanna grassland, coastal fog desert, and an ocean with its own living coral reef and thousands of species of animals and plants. The eight biospherans, four men and four women, passed through the airlocks on September the 26th, 1991. They agreed to spend two years inside a sealed terrarium the size of two and a half football pitches. It wasn't long, however, before they began experiencing serious problems. After the environment was sealed, noxious gases built up. The mission had to pump in 23 tons of oxygen just to keep things alive. A carbon dioxide scrubber had to be installed, contradicting the notion that the plants would keep the air pure. Biospherians lost weight because they weren't able to grow enough food. But the main obstacle was human. Bitter rows split the team in two. That's what happens in the Antarctic. That's what happens in, in space for long periods of, when people are up there for long periods of time. And that's what happened to us in the biosphere. You break into these really entrenched factions. They're not cliques that, you know, kind of evolve and move. They were entrenched. And even today, honestly, almost 20 years later, even today, those two factions have never come back together again. Jane Pointer was the first to face serious problems. Just a couple of weeks into the mission, she sliced off the tip of her finger in a rice hulling machine. After attempts to reattach the finger failed, she reluctantly left the biosphere for a brief period to undergo surgery and still lost her fingertip. With the oxygen levels dropping, the team was experiencing lethargy, shortness of breath and mood swings. Eventually, the project's second mission ended prematurely. As the 20th anniversary of the start of the project nears, there are still mixed feelings about its real achievements. The vast site hasn't gone to waste. Today, the University of Arizona uses the facility as a research lab for climate change. Work is underway to build a new land evolution observatory to study rainwater. Researchers say Biosphere 2 may even be more relevant today than it was 20 years ago and could help figure out how we'll survive in the future on our warming planet. It is now evolved into really a unique environmental research facility. There's nothing of this size or scale anywhere in the world that allows us to control everything from temperature to precipitation to composition of atmospheric gases at a field scale or a large scale level. Apart from its scientific purpose, Biosphere 2 has become a major tourist attraction drawing some 100,000 visitors a year. Two decades on, the conclusion is unequivocal. Biosphere 2 never accomplished its mission to find out whether humans could sustain themselves in an artificial environment. But many still believe this unique and expensive project was worth embarking on.